visiting with Dr. Radhika Demesia from the Mayo Clinic, a geneticist. And in your field, I've always been interested why it is that people come to you to begin with, uh, for what purpose and what kind of cure? Yeah, so I see people of all ages in the clinic. So um, children would come if they have neurologic problems like seizures, developmental delay, speech delay, to find if there's a genetic etiology behind that. Older people or adults will come if they develop any kind of neurologic problems, heart problems, actually any medical issues where, where they have seen other specialists and all the other causes have been ruled out. And now we have started to wonder if, if it is our genes that is driving a particular medical problem. So I, I see literally any indication um, or any medical problem in my clinic. And then we sit down, talk to the patient, take a very detailed three-generation family tree to see if there is any um, risk factors genetically running in the family. And then we talk about testing. But then what can you do about it, no matter what the tests say? Great question. People ask this all the time. So it depends on what we find. Uh, genetics has advanced a lot since we sequenced our genome. Um, genetic testing has become more um, um, applicable in today's field. We can not only um, give a diagnosis to the patient that they had been wanting to know about for sometimes years before they come to see us in genetics clinic, so it gives them a closure. Okay, I was born this way, so this is what I expect for the rest of the, my life. We can help prognosticate certain conditions. Certain medical disorders don't have a cure, but physicians are afraid to tell that to the patient. Patient gets a sense of relief. Okay, there's no no cure I can plan for my future. And in certain diseases, we have treatment. For example, there are storage diseases, or lysosomal storage diseases, where there's a certain enzyme that's missing in a patient's body that can't break complex uh, proteins or fats, and we can give enzyme replacement. So there are certainly um, areas in genetics where there is treatment or management strategies that can improve the quality of life of a patient. How would I know it's time to come to you? <laughs> I, I think if uh, there's a complex medical condition that other physicians don't have answers to, I think it is, it is worth asking a physician, is it appropriate time to refer to genetics? Unfortunately, most patients I see have waited years before their physician thinks of sending them to genetics. Your field is relatively new. What do you see for the future? Yeah, I think genetics has been there for a while, but genetic testing has just evolved. So now we use what we call next generation sequencing technology in our clinic that has enabled us to sequence a, a patient's entire genome in one test. So with one blood draw, we can do their entire genome and get answers. So I think that's the future, to make it more accessible, less expensive, and have insurance companies pay for it more readily. Is there one myth that continues to be perpetuated about DNA testing and genetics in general that you'd like to do away with right now? Yeah, that it is expensive. It is, so if I added the cost of a patient's going through a diagnostic odyssey for three or four years, doctor visits, MRIs, biopsies, surgeries, and then one DNA genome testing, it's way less. So genetic testing is becoming more and more inexpensive. And that's the myth I wanna take, um, clarify. <laughs> And just in case somebody says, how do you know so much about this field? You say, well, I was watching uh, Dr. Radhika Demesia uh, from the Mayo Clinic, uh, that's her specialty.